Are you a budding songwriter wanting to write a song like Lady Gaga or Taylor Swift or Zed? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the basic song structures in dance pop music that will help your song fit right in on the radio. Let's blast off and get started. Konnichiwa Cyborgs, I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music, helping you become a better songwriter. I'm a futuristic and outer space inspired dance pop artist and every Wednesday on this channel I'm helping others take their music to level 2. If that sounds good, consider subscribing. If not, well then you're going to be missing out on all these awesome pop secrets that they don't want you to know. So you best rethink that and hit the subscribe button. Please, do it. So in case you're a true beginner, let's start with what the actual parts of a song are. First up is the intro. It's usually a simple melody that builds into the verse. It can be a guitar riff or a few synth chords, etc. It's usually short and sweet, about four to eight measures long. There are some exceptions, but it just depends. The verse is the main part of the song's story. There are typically two to three verses in a dance pop song, and common rhyme schemes for those are usually A-A-B-B or A-B-A-B, where A and A rhyme together and B and B rhyme together. Next up is the B section, which is also known as the hook. It's usually rhythmically different from the verse in the chorus. A typical rhyme scheme you're going to hear on the radio is usually A-A-B-A -A -A, and usually in the second B section later on in the song that's when those B lines will rhyme together. It's usually short and sweet like the intro about four to eight measures long but it also moves the story along and acts as kind of a rise up to the chorus. It's kind of like that moment in an elevator where you're starting to move up but you haven't quite reached the floor that you're going to yet. That's basically what the B section is. Your chorus is your main hook. It's it's usually the climax of energy, it's usually catchy and memorable, and it's also repeatable. The post-chorus is another section of repeatable hooks. It can be instrumental or vocal or both, and it kind of continues the chorus's energy and acts as kind of like a soaring effect is what it's called, to just kind of keep the energy going just before the next section. Next up is the bridge, or sometimes it's called the breakdown. It's usually melodically different from the rest of the song, and typically in pop music, it's about eight measures long. Normally, if you're writing a story-based song, that's kind of where you would put the resolve. That's not always the case, but typically that's kind of where the story comes together. If it's instrumentation, it just kind of creates another dynamic moment. It's really up to you. And the last part is the outro. This is used to kind of create, if you picture an airplane kind of coming into a soft landing before the end of the song. It's usually melodically very simple, but it's usually not as simple as the intro. Okay, so now that we know what the parts of a song are and how to differentiate them, let's talk the actual song structures. So the most common format you're typically going to see on the radio is intro, verse, B section, chorus. This is the most common format that I use in my music. And usually the format is intro, verse 1, B section, chorus, verse 2, B section 2, chorus, bridge, chorus again. Sometimes there's an outro, it just depends. The intro is usually very recognizable and it kind of acts as its own hook. The bridge, even if it's the same verse from earlier, it's usually melodically different. Typically that's that's kind of where you're gonna put your featured artist or your rapper. If you want an example of that, check out my song Genesis. There's a link in the description below. The next most common structure that you're typically gonna see is verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, otherwise known as verse, chorus form. It's a basic structure that consists of verse, sometimes a B section, chorus, verse two, chorus, bridge, chorus. I have found in modern radio at the time of this recording, that format tends to lend itself to shorter songs, but by all means that is not always the case. There are exceptions to the rule. Again, just depends on your song and what you want to write. If you want an example of this format, really check out Part of Me by Katy Perry. The next song structure that you'll typically hear is chorus, verse, bridge. Basically, the format for this is chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. If you're writing in this form, you really want to make sure that your chorus is catchy and hooky. You're starting off with the climax of energy, so you really want to make sure your meaning is clear. But if you want a really good example of this, I would recommend checking out Come and Get It by Selena Gomez. It starts off with high energy, it continues the high energy, it's, it's a good reference. And the last song structure I have for you is verse, chorus, post-chorus. An artist that is known for writing in this way is Lady Gaga. She's really mastered how to write post-chorus hooks, so that's partially why her songs are so hooky and memorable and catchy. If you want a good song to reference this, check out her song Born This Way. 
So a question of the video, what is your favorite song on the radio right now? Leave a comment letting me know. And as always, leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it or found it helpful and subscribe if you're new. I put out new videos every single Wednesday. And if you wanna check out any of the examples I mentioned in this video, there are links in the description below, so make sure you check them out. All right, you guys, that's gonna be it. Again, I'm Jonathan Miller, and I will see you next time. Matane!